Have you experienced this problem before, Dub World Family? No, it's not the battery. It's the starter. So when you want to change your starter, first thing you want to do is disconnect your positive battery cable. That's the one that's actually going to the starter. Make sure you get that disconnected. You don't want any power going to it while you're working on it. And it'll also help you if you need to pull this out for some reason, like it's stuck, can't get it off the starter, you'll have a little more space. You're gonna be jacking up your car, so make sure you put your brake on, leave it in gear. Also put a wheel chalk on the opposite side. This is the driver's side. We're gonna be jacking up the passenger side. Safety first. So where do you jack up your beetle? They do have jack points, but I would not recommend jacking from there. When you're doing the back, best place I found is under the spring plate that where the torsion bar goes in here and mounts. Nice solid place to lift your car. Want to get your jack under that point. Loosen up your lugs and then start jacking up the car. In case you're unfamiliar, uh, the VW Beetles air cool cars use a 19 millimeter or a three quarters inch socket to remove the lug bolts. Once you get your wheel off, make sure you get a jack stand underneath your car here, underneath the frame. I always leave the jack as well, just kind of uh, double protection. You can see that wheel chalk on the other side, but starters up in here. You can see the battery cable coming out to it. If you've got heater like this one, I'm just gonna remove the heater tube out of the way. Tube is really easy to remove. You just kind of kind of push it backwards and pull it down. It just pops right on in. You can see where it goes there. Here's your starter. You want to take off that 13 millimeter. When you're in here, make sure you check your connections. Make sure the wiring is good, the cables are clean, nothing is frayed or burned. So here's a look at the back of your starter. You're going to want to go ahead and take off the 13 millimeter here, which goes to the battery, and then up to, in this case, an alternator. And then you're going to take off the power wire here. That's from the ignition. That just simply unplugs. Clean your connection while you have it off. Same thing with this one here and this one here. Bottom, right here, you've got a 17 millimeter nut, and up top, Behind your engine, behind your fan shroud, you've got a, another 17 millimeter nut and a bolt. Now the bolt runs through the top of the starter, which you can't see from here. So take the one up top off first, and then take the one on the bottom, and make sure you hold the starter when you pull it out so you don't drop it on yourself. Inside your engine compartment, behind your fan shroud, on the passenger side, you're going to see a 17 millimeter nut. That is your other starter bolt. That's the one that you can't see from down below. So I would recommend taking this nut off first before you do the one underneath. Once you pull the starter out, you wanna take a look at your flywheel teeth, make sure they look good. Also look at the starter bushing. Again, if this bushing is worn, you'll need to replace it. However, if you have a later model car with a 12 volt flywheel, you can use an auto stick starter, which is self-supporting, and you don't have to worry about that bushing. This bushing, you can see here, six volt is a larger bushing, 12 volt is a smaller bushing. So that's how you can tell starters if it's a six or 12 volt. But if this bushing is bad in your transmission, it can cause this shaft to kind of shake around in there and can cause some damage quick fix on a lot of these if people don't want to pull the bushing out because it is kind of a pain you got to get up in there with a tool and pull it out is to use the self-supporting automatic starter which does not have this shaft so that's what I actually recommend to put on all the cars because it's a higher torque starter anyways so once I do the conversion on this car I'll be putting that starter in before you install a starter especially in this case a used starter make sure you clean your contacts and clean your attachment nuts and bolts, uh, washers, anything you have. Also, the area here that the cable goes up against. I would just recommend using some sandpaper and just sand it. You want it as clean, as contact as possible. You can always use a little uh, dielectric grease on here too to keep corrosion from happening. 
I'm gonna show you how to test a starter from a good battery. So take some jumper cables, put your positive on your positive battery and the power post on the solenoid here on the starter. You're gonna take the negative from your battery and put it on the starter itself to ground it. Then if you have a jumper wire, you can connect it to the power side. If you don't, you can use a screwdriver. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna touch this to the ignition source. And see, we've got the starter engaging. What you wanna do is get in here and clean all your contacts with sandpaper, battery cable, everything that you have back here, make sure it's clean. And putting the starter in is just the reverse of what you did to take it out. So I'm not gonna show you that process here. Just make sure all your connections are clean, get everything bolted up nice and tight. Make sure you get that 17 millimeter nut up in your engine compartment. Don't forget about that one. And below, reconnect your battery and then give your car a start. And don't forget, once you get your wheel back on, you wanna make sure you torque it in a crisscross pattern at 81 foot pounds. And that's all for today's video, showing you how to remove a starter in your air-cooled VW Beetle. As always, thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll see you next time on Dub World.